Hi everyone, this is Daniel from Uncharted Ways and today we're giving our shipwreck a home. If you remember the video that we released two weeks ago about how to make a boat out of popsicles, you will remember that we left that boat without a home. Today, we will fix that by crashing it to a nice shore. If you haven't seen that video, please make sure that you click that subscribe button. And now let's get to it. I had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do, but still I decided to draw it first. This is not a, just a shipwreck placed in a random beach. This is the starting point of some kind of story I'm writing and the core or leitmotiv of this channel. I'm not doing random dioramas, they all represent a storyline. And this beach is the starting point like a hidden, hard to access, forgotten beach where some characters were thrown. All right, let's get into the actual diorama. It's actually easier if you decompose it into its three main components. The rock wall, which will be made out of XPS foam. The beach, made it uh, with real sand and plaster. And the ocean. For the base, I picked a random plastic heart to rent sign that I found on the street. If not, a cheap 3mm plywood plank or if not XPS foam will do the job. To add more durability, we are putting some nails where the rocks made of foam will be placed as that will ensure that nothing will move them afterwards. XPS foam is great. Please do not take EPS foam or expanded polystyrene if you can choose. You will recognize it because after making a small cut on EPS foam, your room becomes winter in Narnia, getting small flying balls everywhere. White glue will do the trick if you let it dry. Don't worry about the shape, we can easily modify the looks, but now it's about having the general structure and a solid one. The second part of the structure is the beach. I used some EPS foam that I had, but you can use whatever you want, even cardboard or paper, as all these will be covered later on. I know, it took me literally two minutes to do the opposite that I advised, fantastic. We want the beach to go inside of the sea, so we are tilting it a bit. Once again, don't worry about holes or nasty looks, we will be dealing with that later on. Before moving on to giving texture to the rocks, we need to work a bit more on these foundations. With the help of a cutter, I started removing big chunks of foam. Remember that it's about cutting a bit, don't get carried away and end up with all foam in pieces. Okay, now it's about shaping the rocks. There are many different ways for doing rocks. You can use clay, molds with plaster or even the compound that we will use later on. However, XPS foam allows to easily shape one specific type of erosion in a rock. What you need to do is to take your hobby knife or cutters and cut the foam from up to down and then slice to one side going slightly up and down as you can see. The final surface will be almost flat but with some cracks and that's the outcome we're looking for. Keep all the foam that you have cut because many of those pieces will be useful to simulate rocks later on. As you see, I'm not gluing pieces that I specifically cut, but rather chunks that I cut earlier on from the main part. I said this already, but believe me, it doesn't matter if this does not look good right now or if there is too much room between rocks. I promise we will deal with that later on. I removed the kitchen paper roll that I placed for simulating the arc 
and went on with carving it out of foam. There is another nail on the base of the arc for help in keeping all together. You can do this in one piece, in two or three pieces as I did. Just get their general shape because everything will be smooth and shaped later on. Now that we have all the general shapes, it's about filling all those holes. Two sharp edges and not good looking angles. I am going to use modeling compound that I made out of toilet paper and plaster of Paris because it does the job and it's super cheap. But honestly feel free to use an already made mix. If you would like that I make a video about this or any other modeling tricks that you've seen in this video, please leave a comment below. Mixing this compound with water, we have a paste that we can put in all crevices and angles and especially to cover the beach. We want the sea to go on the sand so there is a nice transition. As plaster hardens, I smooth the surface with my fingers. Let this dry overnight. I wanted to add some rocks on the surface and for this you can use foam chunks once again, but cork really looks great. Just grab a few from wine bottles and carefully, with a hobby knife, start cutting small pieces. Use your fingers to crack out the cork as this will add credibility to random shapes. With the help of some white glue, I started to add the pieces at the bottom randomly, also going inside the sea. I didn't fully cut three corks, so they will stand out from the sea bottom. Now that we have the general shape, it's time to paint the rocks. I decided I wanted darker rocks, so I primed everything with a mix of three parts black acrylic paint and two parts water. But if you want rocks to look lighter, start with a gray. I covered everything but the cork rocks as they weren't properly glued yet but I made sure the paint would go down into all crevices and holes. While the black is drying on the rocks, I went on and primed the sea. This time I used a mix of 50-50 sea and blue and black as I want a very dark touch to sew from beneath later on. As the surface where I'm working is of plastic nature, I did three layers of painting using the hair dryer to speed up the process. As the cork rocks are already glued, I primed them with the black paint and I moved on to paint the rocks with the grey I was looking for. Paint the rocks is a four step process. First, we prime them, otherwise paint wouldn't stick properly to it. Then we use our main color, in this case uh, two parts black, three parts white, more or less, and use any brand. Don't fill your brush with paint and go always in the same direction. We just want to give the rocks the general look. We can call it the base color. Once this is done, it's time to have a look and shade and light the different parts of the rocks. For doing that, there is a trick which is putting the diorama under a strong light which will show us where we have those lights and shadows. Use that black paint, water down, to go over those shadowy areas once again. For the lighter parts, we are just going to grab a dry brush, now with a mix one part black, three parts white, and go heavily in those areas that we want even lighter.
so now it's beat time. This is one of those parts when, if possible, I'd rather go for actually natural materials. I have two types of sand that I picked from my near place. One is thin sand and the other like more like gravel. What we will do is to first spray some white glue diluted in water on the beach platform and then just little by little add the sand so it's equally distributed. Once that's done, spray another round of white glue diluted, but this time spray some propylene alcohol first, so the glue really soaks in the sand. There are many ways of doing the sea, but we are going to give the sea bottom a bigger depth with three colors. With the help of an airbrush, but you can do this easily with a brush, it just takes longer, we are going to paint a gradient of three colors to show depth. I'm using Vallejo Blue, Turquoise and Deep Sky Blue and I'm going to go a bit over the sand and some of the rocks as they will be underwater. Sometimes it happens that, regardless of what the original plan was, along the process I realize there's something I don't really like or an idea that doesn't fully work. And that's okay. Having a look at the beach, I realized that the sand didn't look as bright as I intended. So I grabbed more sand and I mixed it with some plaster and applied it all over again. For ensuring the sand would remain glued, I sprayed once again propylene alcohol and then white glue diluted in water. This combination really ensures durability while not leaving any trace. Finally, it has arrived. It is epoxy time. Epoxy resin is a bit more expensive material than what we were using until now, but the effect that it gives to a diorama, it certainly pays off. It's not a complicated process, but you really need to follow the specific steps of the epoxy that you buy. The surfaces where you can apply it, the ratio for mixing the two components that epoxy is made of, or how to color transparent epoxy, are issues that change from product to product. Go over the product specification as everything should be explained. What doesn't change is that epoxy will leak everywhere if allowed to, so the first thing that we are gonna do is to cover all the sides of the diorama and secure it with hot glue and tape, so epoxy and gravity don't betray us. This specific epoxy is mixed with a ratio 100 to 60, so with the help of my fancy scale I measured it in two glasses and I thoroughly mix several minutes, allowing the chemical reaction that binds both components to happen. I chose not to color this epoxy with an ink, because I wanted to be able to see the colors that we put at the bottom of the sea, but also because the insides of the shipwreck would be more visible. Epoxy, it's true, will even by itself, but anyway, don't drop it all, all of a sudden, on one side. You will see that despite of having mixed thoroughly, the epoxy still made bubbles. You can either go over them and blow or use either a hair dryer or a torch, but carefully. Something I learned doing this is that I found yet another reason to hate EPS foam. It's so much painful to remove. Anyway, anything can be removed from the sides of the epoxy with a hobby knife, so I guess I just wanted to be angry at EPS foam. And this is more or less how it should look like. Once epoxy is done, we need to make these beads look a bit more vibrant, adding some vegetation. One of the points of this channel is trying to use inexpensive materials, and I know that an airbrush or epoxy do not fall into that category, but let's talk about that in a while. Right now we are trying to do some vegetation and of course you can just buy bushes, grass, etc. Just as we could have bought the sun and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, if you have a static grass or flock, go on and use it. I'm just gonna use some rope. Sparta rope is great 
and I'm gonna cut it of one centimeter length, approximately. This rope is made out of four smaller ropes that I'm gonna put separately. Just take each of those small one centimeter pieces and with some glue, put them on top of car box or some foam leftovers as I'm doing. Once glue is dry, you can use a hobby knife to collect them like a true person with a sickle. But wait, I like the brown vibe for some beach plants, but what if you don't? Well, in that case, I would advise to use a wash of your desired color on the rope before you actually cut it. Or if you have an airbrush, just paint them once the glue is actually dry. Both ways are fine. What truly doesn't work in my opinion is giving a wash to the flock that has been glued already. The fibers of the rope will lose the vibrancy and the softness. I'm using the airbrush to give a greener look to the rope fibers, but as you will see later on, I actually use the ones I didn't paint. It doesn't matter. They actually look good, so I will use them for another project. Nothing to waste. And now it's just about placing them wherever you see fit. A small tip, while the white glue is not fully dried, grab the flock and start placing it. It has enough consistency to stand and you don't have to use any more glue. I know this video is already long and you might already know all about inexpensive materials for vegetation. So let me speed up the process of making cheap bushes with cheap effects. Boom, there, fantastic. Now let's make this landscape greener. I'm just adding the flock to the crevices and places where I think it fits. And on top of the rock wall, I'm putting some grass. In order to ensure that everything stays where I want, I'm adding afterwards a mix of white glue and water with the help of a dropper. Of course, there are several ways for simulating the foam of the waves. However, as we're already using epoxy, we can use it for the final touches. First, we're gonna put a very thin layer of epoxy all over the surface that we want to cover. While this layer is drying, we are gonna mix a very small amount of epoxy with white paint. I used an acrylic ink, but you can use pigments or other products. After some 10 to 15 minutes have passed since we put the first layer of epoxy, we are gonna put the second, the one mixed with white, next to the shore, but also in places where the waves would collapse creating the foam. I really like the effect that white epoxy makes when mixed with the transparent one, but in case you don't want to create a lot of foam, I recommend you to add directly the paint to the epoxy on the diorama, but in very small amounts, be careful about this. Once you add the paint or white epoxy, it's time to use your hair dryer or airbrush, in my case, to actually push the paint for creating these random foam shapes in the water. Once the epoxy is dry, it's time for the final touch that will add a bit more vibrancy to the diorama. With the help of some gloss mod podge, we're gonna make the water shine. Add some mud pots to the surface and with the help of an airbrush, blow it forward. If you don't have an airbrush, don't worry, just take a brush and start adding it in small quantities. It dries fairly quickly, so I recommend you to do it in small batches. And that's it, our coast is done and we have finally given our shipwreck a home. But this is only the start. From this beach, we are continuing our journey inland. If you don't want to miss the next stage in this adventure, please subscribe. Okay, so that's all from me. But remember, it wasn't just foam, it's also a beach.